Hi folks, been a very long time since I've been in the log cabin doing some work, but I've been forced to come in here because my compressor's playing up. I've had to buy a new head for it for the uh, pressure regulator. So I'm gonna take the old one off, get the new one fitting, hopefully that'll sort out the problem. So let's get going. Right, so I've pulled the, the um, compressor out and actually one of the wheels has uh, collapsed as well. Look at that, look. Lucky enough, I can go onto the website and um, buy a new one of them. And that's not actually, that's not as if it gets rolled about at all. Look, just sits in one place, but we pulled it out yesterday and that fell off. <laughs> so I can order another wheel, that's not a problem. That's where I got the compressor from. This is about ooh, five years old now, but Jimmy used this for three years in his unit and uh, when he had a unit and it was on daily using all the time. So I've actually replaced, I think I had to replace the motor or the compressor, one of the two, I can't remember now. But it did have a new motor or compressor on it, so because um, it was worked really, really hard. But it don't get used all that often in here. But um, I've had to buy the whole new head unit. This thing here. This is where the pressure regulator is, and as you can see, the pressure controls are preset. Do not adjust the factory settings. So that's that there. This bit I've got to unbolt. Uh, that comes off. I've got to connect the two wires up there, and also that pressure tube there. It's got to be disconnected so let me just show you what i've actually bought if i come over here this is a replacement one which is a four port one exactly the same and again so it's just a matter of reconnecting up the wires they do send you a new gauge with this one which is ideal and also a brand new uh, pressure release valve as well so i'll be fitting that as well because this one's actually slightly less i think that one was 150 psi this one's about 140 psi which i'm not really too bothered about so that's that. So before I can actually unscrew this, it fixes onto the main chamber via one spout up there, which you just literally spin off. But you've got to disconnect, obviously, the electrics. That's got to come undone. That's got to come undone. Then I can spin it off and possibly disconnect it. So um, I'm going to carry on, start to do that, and I'll see you in a minute. So we've undone these cables and that pipe going into obviously the um, output to give the pressure regulator. And just to let you know folks, this has been drained of uh, pressure. There's no pressure in this whatsoever. So we literally just unscrew that head now. And basically that's it. You see that water come out of there? Look, there's water in there, look. So that's drained out. That's now I can have some PTFE tape wrapped around it when I put it back on. So all that remains now is to basically just uh, check whether my outlets are exactly the same which they appear to be there so i haven't got a problem there everything appears to be the same so that um pressure release valve goes in this side well in fact if i take this cover off it's just one screw in the middle there like that and i'll just extract that that's it put that down there like that that goes like that, that one goes like that, the same. And just to have a visual, they should be the same. Yeah, there we go. Exactly the same. So I'll just transfer over the new bits. Let me get some PTFE tape, which I've got here. So gauge first. Always wrap it in a clockwise direction, folks. And also taking care not to spread it across there. Should be enough. Rip it off. The gauge goes in this side. And don't tighten it up with like that. That's what you've got these flats for on there. You turn it up, you could twist and break the um the gauge. I don't know if I've got the right size one yet. So 15, no, 14 mil. There we go. So that's going to be facing that way up. I might be able to get another turn on that. There we go. That 
should be alright. Right, so that's that one in. I can unscrew this now out of here. This one there. That 14 as well, yep. There we go, should be that tight. They're never that tight, these ones, folks. So if this one goes in the front one. There we go. Keep that one there. And again, I need some new PTFE tape on here. I normally like to go around five times. Five or six times. There we go, try that. So that one goes in the front. That's the regulator valve, that one. Should be able to get that round to there. There we go, that should be okay. So that one measures the tank pressure when this cuts out at its set point, which is, should be about 140 PSI. And this one is where you regulate the output pressure, although my valve's come off of there, like my cap. So you turn that, and then you can drop it down to whatever pressure you want coming out of the outlets. So that's that one. Right, okay, so I've got another one to go in uh, that side, what I can't put in yet, because I need to be able to spin that on, so that's the reason why I can't put that one on until the actual machine's on. That's, uh, that one's going to go in there like that. Right, so that's that. Now we've got the um, pressure relief valve to go in this side. So yet again, more PTFE tape. And again, making sure you don't um, cover up the open port. Oh, we'll try it out of that maybe. Okay, so just pull that off. And that one goes in this side, which is there. And again, screw that in with a spanner. There we go. That's nice enough. Don't over tighten it. Don't forget this is aluminium, this body, so um, we don't want to go too mad. Right, so that's that. I can take that flange off there because we've already got a flange on the um, the original pipe that's on there. I'm not removing that at all. So yeah, I think that looks like about it for me to put on and now do up the electrical connections. So let's get back down there. I'll connect this up. All right, here we are back down at the compressor. I'm just gonna just give that a little bit of a wire brush there. Just get some of that crap out, out of the threads. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. So that's that. And again, get your PTFE tape and wind this on clockwise again. There we go, I think that'll do. Just break that off. There you go. Right, so, I can now start to, hopefully, spin this off on that little one there. So let's get it started first. Should be the same threads. There we go. So if it feels like it goes on too easy, I'll take it off and put some more on, but that's going on nicely. I can feel there's a good seal there. Yeah, let's keep going. Another one. Again, you don't want to force it way too much because uh, you could snap that body of that. That might be all right. You know, that might be all right. I don't know if we'll get that on another turn, maybe. Will we? Yeah, we should do. We'll go for this last one. There we go. Yeah, it's getting tight now. This will be the last one. There we go. Yeah, that's coming nicely tight now. That's perfect. Right, okay. So we're all right there. I can reconnect up this um, pipe here. I'll put that in under there. Tighten that up. Hopefully it should be the same thread. If not, that gives me a problem. That's not going on. Why is that not going on? Right, wait to test it. Is take the old one, get that one I took off, and see if that uh, screws onto there, which it should do. And it doesn't. Look, it's a bloody different thread. Look. 
Now I'll tell you what I could do. I'm gonna to need to get that brass ferrule off of there so that I can put the new one on there, which will obviously match up to that as well. So I'm gonna get a little um, junior hacksaw blade, just cut a diagonal in that, and then that should be able to come off and I should be able to put that one on hopefully. Right, so I've managed to put a little slot in that, and now hopefully this should come off. I just prized it open with a screwdriver. And you see the slice in it, look. It's just that bloody ridge up there, look. Let's get a bigger screwdriver blade. Just try and open it a bit wider with that. There we go. There we go, look at that, look. There we go. So that's that. Now all I'm hoping is that new one will seal under there. Oh, I don't know whether to cut that off because it's been compressed before it might leak you see so I think I'm going to bite the bullet and just chop that down a little bit just to below that um, pressure point so too late now folks I've got to go for it there we go Right, that's that. Let's put a Phillips screwdriver in there just to ream it out a bit. There we go. Take that one off. Put the new one on with the new collet, hopefully it'll slide down there, which it will do. Now hopefully, when I put this up there, we should get a perfect seal. And it looks like it's uh, okay. I can't say nothing really until um, you do tighten it up. So we don't need to um, put some uh, PTFE tape on this because it's done by the olive. So let's just turn that. That's pushed right up. And as that compresses, that should seal that um, pipe in. You know what I should have done? Connected up the electrics on that side first, but never mind. I can, I can get around there somehow and sort that out. So I'm just now I've started this, I'm gonna carry on and press that um, seal oh, I think that's it I think that's compressed it look that's, that's not coming out right okay so coming in this side we've got power in yeah so sometimes folks when you're buying pattern parts the uh, slight things are different you know which I've experienced here so we'll get our earth, which comes underneath there and onto that. There's our earth on. We've got phase and neutral. Neutral goes to the top. There we go. And live goes into here. There we go, always check your connections afterwards, folks. So that's fine, phase and neutral. I'll connect up the one the other side, folks. Right, okay, so that's it now. That's the connections back up now. As you can see, neutral at the top, phase or P uh, at the bottom one. That matches up with the other side. Everything's on and tight. I've put that back in now. There's your pressure release valve, which you can just pull to do a little test on it. I'm going to have to get another wheel for that, so I'm going to take that wheel inside with me because uh, I need to order another one. They do different sizes. Right, so that's that. And while I'm here, this is where the air filter lives inside this little cover there so i thought it'd be a good idea to actually test this as well just to check this bearing in mind the amount of dust that's around here this is held in by a six mil allen bolt or allen screws or whatever you want to call them so we'll just undo these there should only be a little sponge air filter in here which you should check periodically folks because if it ain't sucking air in it ain't putting it out so let's just take them out of there that one a bit more look at all the dust that's collected around this look and if you don't have a clean air filter or you have no air filter in that sucks in dirty dusty air like that and that'll ruin your balls on your piston so let's just have a little look at this see if the air filter has been doing its job to which it has look at the state of that hold on let's put it out there let's get that bolt out of there and just take this air filter out 
I'm always surprised with these um, compressors. Wow, that's stuck in there, look. This was well overdue a good clean, look, or even a change. Look at that, look. Wow, look at that, wow, that's amazing. Look at the crap there, look. That's hardly been breathing at all, that compressor. So, look at that, rock hard, look. Dust on there. What I could probably do is cut a thin slice off of that because that, that's really bad. I'm going to order a new one anyway, but for now, I'm just going to cut that down, give this a clean up, and uh, then put it back together. But I'm going to order a new one now. There's no way that's hardly been breathing, look. Anyway, let me do that and I'll come back to you. Yeah, I just wanted to show you this, folks. Look, I've uh, just been having a little bit of a poke around here. Look at the crap in there, look. Look at that, look. Look, blocking them vents off, look. That's what happens when you don't maintain your equipment properly or you forget. Look at that, look. These vents ain't the biggest at the end of the day, but look at that, look. That was completely blocked up. And I think what I will do is uh, buy a new one of these, actually. I think you buy the air filter complete with the casing, so um, I'll do that, I think. And they're not the biggest of channels, these. I would have thought there would have been um, better ventilation holes for that, but there you go. So I've just cut the back off of that, and as you can see, I've turned it over previously. It used to be that side, like there, before. And I've obviously spanned it round at some stage, so I'm going to put it back on that way, because I've actually cut this off, look. Just to allow it to breathe. That was the face. Look at that rock solid. Look, look, unbelievable, isn't it? Must make the point of regularly servicing it. So anyway, that can go back in now. I'll put that back in now, like that. There you go. Don't need to overforce it. That's it. Done. Happy days. This is a belt drive compressor, folks, and. Just check the belt tension while I'm here, which again seems to be fine. I'm happy with that, about a centimetre of play there. <sighs> this cover should be able to go back on now, like that. And that should be it. We should be back in business. So, one other thing I want to check as well is the fluid level on the compressor. There is a red dot in the middle there, but the fluid should be halfway up into the red dot, which I can't see. So, um, I'm going to put some more oil in. This is the actual compressor oil that come with it. So let's just drop some of this in. Hopefully see that start to come up on the... On the dipstick. In actual fact, I think it was on the dipstick anyway. I think it's just clear oil. Right, okay. So I think that's gonna be okay. I just wanna double, double check. Just by sticking a plastic tube in to the bottom of the sump. And like a straw, if I cover the end of my finger with that and lift it up, it should stay in the straw, so to speak, and I can check the level. There we go. So I know that goes down to there. And can you see it? Just like, um, I'll put it in again, look. Till it touches the bottom. This is just a little double check you can do. So just into the bottom, it's touching the bottom now. Cover the finger at the end of that. Put my hand there where I know the top of the fill level is. Take it out and then hold it back to that level again. And I can see now that that is halfway. Can you see that in the in the fluid there? Look, it's in the in the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's, that's where it went in. So it's halfway up the level there, which is ideal because it's clear. You can't really see it. You see, that's just another way I can uh, do that. So if I let go of the finger now, look. The oil starts to come out of the tube. There you go. Just a little double check to make sure the level's where it is. If you can't really see it in the sight glass, because sometimes these can get discoloured, it's just another way you can check the um, oil. I've got to get another fill plug for this as well. The top of it snaps off because this acts as a vent as well. So that's just something else I've got to do. I'll order one of them. And this bottle here has actually lasted about five years. I initially filled it up with this as well, so I'm probably down to about there now on it. So that's the, the initial fill, and then just topping it up every year or so. So one other modification that I had to make to this was to um, take off the bottom bleed valve. It had one of those silly little screw ones on there, which 
over a while, well, it didn't take long before it started to deteriorate and uh, I couldn't undo it properly and very fiddly to do. So all I've done was put an elbow on there, put a, 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 like a an adapter on there, put this elbow compression joint and then just put a normal like little ball valve that you can turn with a screwdriver and let the water come out there. A lot easier than that silly little thing that uh, it did have before. So that's another modification I've made to this. So I think we're at the stage now where we can turn it on. Right, just switch the power on. And technically speaking now, by pulling this up, it should fire in. There we go. Right. I'll let that build up to pressure and then I'll come back to you. Right, okay folks, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go inside and order a few more parts, as you know, and um, then I can get this put back in. I can't really put it back in until I get that wheel put back in because I've got to have to roll it under the worktop. So anyway, I'm gonna leave it here for now. Sorry there's not been too many videos coming out recently, but I've been extra busy with our other channel. Plus we've got uh, holidays coming up as well, and we have had quite a few uh, trips away to do our videos on our other channel as well. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. If you do want to have a look at that, just check out Butler's Empire. It's more sort of uh, what we get up to during the day, plus a little bit of foodie type uh, videos which we create. And uh, anyway, that's enough of that. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. <music>